All right. Welcome, Door Grow Hackers, to the Door Grow Show. If you are a property management entrepreneur that wants to add doors, make a difference, increase revenue, help others, impact lives, and you are interested in growing your business and life, and you are open to doing things a bit differently, then you are a Door Grow Hacker. Door Grow Hackers love the opportunities, daily variety, unique challenges, and freedom that property management brings. Many in real estate think you're crazy for doing it. You think they're crazy for not because you realize that property management is the ultimate high trust gateway to real estate deals, relationships, and residual income. At DoorGrow, we are on a mission to transform property management businesses and their owners. We want to transform the industry, eliminate the BS, build awareness, change perception, expand the market, and help the best property management entrepreneurs win. I'm your host, property management growth expert, Jason Hull, the founder and CEO of DoorGrow. Now, Let's get into the show. All right, gentlemen, <clears throat> welcome. So I've got here hanging out with me, Brian Jenkins and Jonathan Cook. So which one's which? I'm Jonathan and I'm Brian. So <laughs> Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Brian. All right. So Jonathan, Brian, both of you have some experience in growing your property management business. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd love to get into kind of your background. So whoever wants to go first, share a little bit about your background, how you got into property management, into the space, and maybe a little bit about why somebody should listen to you today. Would okay. be awesome. Brian's is much more impressive. You go ahead, buddy. <laughs> All right, let's go, about, Brian. I don't know You're about right. impressive. He maybe you in. infamous, maybe. I don't know. So so I've been uh, I've been a property manager now for 19 years, and uh, we started this firm uh, ground up, but tied into, we have a corporate housing company, uh, where we do fully furnished corporate, uh, corporate housing for uh, guests that are relocating. And we operate that model in, uh, 12 different physical locations in six states servicing 14 markets. So with that, we had brick and mortar locations and I came online, uh, in 2000, we started buying residential single family homes. Uh, to facilitate our corporate housing needs. And then from there, we, we actually acquired a property management company here in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, back in late 2003. And since that point, we have uh, we've been growing. So that's the only acquisition we've really done through the years. Uh, we first acquired that management company. We had 109 properties in that portfolio that we uh, that we acquired. And by that time, we had We'd purchased 52 of our own properties in the A classifications for corporate re rentals and, uh, and leaseback. So with that, we've grown over the years to, uh, gosh, five locations now and, uh, and working in two states with our property management platform. And we're managing uh, just, just shy of 1,100 single family homes now. Um, I personally am, uh, I came from a military background nine years active service, got into uh, real estate. My parents have always been entrepreneurs. Uh, I'm partnered in this operation and uh, really got plugged in. Probably my, my big cook kickoff and, and the expansion piece of it really took flight after I found Marpham back in 2011. And uh, so I got plugged in there with the Atlanta chapter. I'm a past Atlanta chapter president. I'm currently the Narpham National uh, Member Services Committee Chair and I, I just dropped my application for RVP. So we'll uh, see how that one plays out. But uh, a lot of experience. Uh, we've got a team of, uh, including myself, we've got 23 uh, property managers uh, working in our operation. And, uh, and Jonathan is our business development. So I'm going to kind of <clears throat> segue that into him. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I got my real estate license in 2007. And I was the youngest realtor in the state of Alabama when I got it. Um, I was 21. Fun what, facts. Yeah, fun facts. Yeah. Um, but my entire life, I have been, you know, surrounded with real estate. My uh, my my stepdad owned a real estate company. Uh, he was in construction for a long time, even before that. Uh, my mom's best friend is a real estate agent in the area that that has always owned properties, has her own rental company, um, and so <clears throat> kind of after high school. Um, it just became my secondary job for the longest time of be her property manager. I don't want to drive out to my 15 properties or however many she ended up having at the time. You know, I've got mm -hmm. this property. I need you to run over there, take, get rent, get this, make sure you maintain this, paint these walls, this tenants out, this tenants in, you know, call the newspaper. This is early 2000s 
you know, before I even got my real estate license, I was still trying to, you know, do the maintenance piece of it. And then when I got my real estate license, it was, I was doing real estate and like had a you were working like a field tech. Yeah. Like, like a field tech. Yeah, I just, yeah, it, yeah. just like a, I had like this halfway working knowledge of what property management was a thought supposed to be. Um, but I mean, and I was a realtor at that point. So I was like, yeah, I've, I've got an idea. Um, and then when the real estate market crashed in, you know, 08, 09, there was not, uh, you know, the source of income that, that I was used to. So I, I started dealing with investors with this slight little piece of halfway working knowledge that I had built up with my family of like, okay, well, you know, rentals and trying to figure out how the single family rental market works and start cherry picking areas because I had access to MLS and I could look up where properties were at the time. There was mm-hmm. no, uh, you know, internet documentation. Like I couldn't send documents online and have them, you know, signed. Yeah, there, was no, there was no electronic yeah. signatures at all. <laughs> so I was having to. It wasn't footwork. that long ago. That's a it really thing, wasn't. So. I was having to drive <laughs> offers on HUD homes from Birmingham, where I'm at, I mean, like an hour and a half away to the closest HUD office, which is in Anniston, which is a whole nother city in Alabama. It's, it was like an hour and a half that I had to drive it and it had to have ink on page. Here, this is an offer. Yeah. Will you take it? And then you go, nah, <laughs> get out of so here. Needless to say, things are a little bit more efficient now. <sighs> a little bit. I, I, I made my way. My wife actually worked for AHI for years before I did. I, I just started uh, as the business development manager in October of last year. After my wife begging me for years, would you please go with AHI? Like, you know what we do here? I'm like, yeah, it's property management. I know how to do that. Oh, I had no idea how to do that. And then I got here and I'm like, oh, I got plugged into NARPM, started learning all the extra pieces, ins and outs that I didn't even know that I didn't know here mm. at, at AHI and learn, have been learning. I learn on a daily basis from Brian and from everyone else here in the office. And it's just become a get it now. And and there's always going to be stuff that I'm not going to know, but yeah, but it's yeah, uh, that's that's a challenge. That's the beauty of property management. I always say you you love it or you hate it, and there's really no gray area in between. So as long as you're right. learning something every day and, and solving issues, that's that's what keeps me coming back daily. So so that's that's and, kind of us. That's kind of us. Well, in like nutshell. I said in the intro, like the people that like like this, they like the the unique challenges, the daily variety. They like the opportunities, and ultimately, if you're an entrepreneur, you like freedom. Yeah. You, yeah. And uh, you'd rather be working 80 hours for yourself than 30 <laughs> for somebody else. That's know? right. That's right. So it's it's just we're crazy like that. So, all right. So maybe let's get into how you guys have grown. So you've mentioned, you know, there was an acquisition. There's, um, you know, there's a couple of little things that you've, you've done. But let's get into how are you? Uh, adding the bulk of the doors into your, into your business. And, and, and how does this, um, and I guess the top, the conversation topic at hand, what is uh, supposed to be about um, multiple markets. And so uh, how do you manage doing multiple locations? And when do you feel is the right time to go into a second location for most managers that are listening? Well, we're, I'm going to say that uh, based on what I said earlier in kind of our, our history, is we're probably a little more unique than a company just trying to open a market from scratch in an outside mm-hmm. area, because our 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 growth strategy is actually to come alongside our corporate housing company, utilize the brick and mortar they already have. So then we just okay. come in with client, we come in with systems, we come in with and hire local talent, and then with that we're we're ready to go operational handling back office out of our main our main hub here in Birmingham. Um, so that allows us greater freedom and greater flexibility and movement with, with our client base. So if our client takes us like we our our most recent acquisition was Oklahoma city and we opened in December of 2017 and we went out there, uh, basically with a client that took us out there with 24 properties to get us started, hired a single property manager. And now we're managing 158 properties on the ground there. So um, you know, some other clients have come along the way and have been clients we're working with in, in multiple markets as well. Okay. So let's give some of the listeners some tips or some strategies here okay. for growing their property management company. So what would your recommendation be if you were talking to a property manager 
who is sitting, uh, we've got two kind of sand traps that people fall into. So the first ones, maybe they're the solopreneur stuck at 50 or 60 units. Yep. Okay. What would you recommend to somebody at 50 or 60 units if they're wanting to add doors and uh, build up a portfolio? Let your entrepreneurial spirit fly first and foremost. So, um, and I would say be, be willing to take some risk. You have to be able to do that. Uh, what I see in, in property management is I see people that um, are, are stuck in the box. And what I mean by that is they're happy signing accidental landlords on a daily basis and dealing with the one-off homeowner that yeah, by calls. default is a landlord, right? That, that calls you because they've seen your sign. Right. Now, Jonathan just talked to one earlier today. And uh, the expectations are totally, you know, off scale. They're, they have no investment mindset whatsoever, and they've got a strong emotional attachment to the property. So, and in my opinion, if you if you start taking in those kind of clients, it's going to keep you at that rate because they're going to they're going to require way absolutely. more attention. Yeah, they're yeah. they're going to need hand holding for every little thing. Yeah, yeah. they don't if have they're only going to stay a year. Mindset, if they're only going to stay a year, yeah, that means a, every year you have to get a new one to replace them, right. plus yeah, another right. one if you want to grow and add something new. So. Yeah, it's uh, if you build your business on accidental landlords, it can be pretty difficult unless you're yeah. magically able to convince them to switch to buy and hold. Well, so. in that case, you're also not generally you're not directing them into the markets that they can make money, which will in turn allow them to purchase more doors for you to manage. Right. Um, that's that's one of the things I like to help our investors do is mm -hmm. identify markets. And I think that's super important for any any property manager, no matter where you are. Knowing that, knowing your markets, knowing them really, really well, like the back of your hand and being able to educate uh, owners and investors, and from, investors from all over. Yeah, whether investors, green, experienced, whatever. And I, Jason, I would say that the big game changer for us was really about three and a half years ago, maybe even four years ago, looking at the diversification of our portfolio existing mm -hmm. and then realizing realizing we had a heavy concentration of accidental landlords and hearing the same information being repeated back to say, you know what, a lot of the property managers I know, their inventory, their, their managed inventory was shrinking and consistently shrinking year after year as the sales market started to gain momentum. Right. So, and that's what happens to your accidental landlords is they, they, they jump ship when it's a good time to sell. And uh, I can get my money back out. That's right. That's right. So in, in some of those we did over the years, I, you know, as long as we've been at it, um, you know, I've had investors that have actually started off as accidental landlords and then they've converted to buy and hold. And then they've added another property and another property and they've educated themselves and, be, and they've become investors, real estate investors. So, okay. and they've, they've done it, in my opinion, they've done it the right way. So they, they're learning as they go, um, and, and, you know, the right way for them, I guess. Um, they're, they're educating, taking the step. They're not taking too much time to take the step because otherwise you miss the opportunity. So what we focused on was, hey, we want to understand not only what is going on in our local markets, but we want to get a, a broader national picture and see what markets are hot markets, why they're hot markets, what types of return on investment are investors realizing, particularly after, you know, we, we looked at that focused on the time period after 2010, after bottoms have been hit and, you know, mm -hmm. you're starting to get some upward momentum again uh, with property values and such. So, so we we started attending outside events such as IMN or Five Star, started to align ourselves with um, some funds, uh, some re small REITs and property owners that had portfolios that weren't necessarily internalizing their management operations. So they were looking, they were small enough, they needed a, a, a professional partner to partnership with and uh, to make make their uh, operation run as efficiently as, as possible and, and focused on key metrics. So so that's where we started focusing our education and peace and then started signing those clients. And and really, um, you know, it's been a been a wonderful piece. And from that, we've guess we've added uh, another piece to our business, which we have an in, internal insurance agency, which we opened up last year that focuses on an investment product. Uh, they can insure in 50 states. So it's so if they're buying a property in one of our existing markets or even a couple of them, 
Um, that's the beauty of having multiple markets. They may focus on investment in three or four year markets, but then they're buying elsewhere. So the insurance piece will pick up their properties wherever they have them in the country. And uh, that's been a really uh, powerful piece for us. And that's come online, especially we opened it last year, but we really have been ga gaining momentum in the last six months with that piece. Um, this and is a third party tool that or resource or vendor that you guys have signed on with? No, this is uh, it's a sister company. So it's Birmingham Insurance Group and mm -hmm. uh, and their carriers are, are third party. Yes. Uh, okay. They use some uh, national carriers that are backed by Lloyd's of London and, the, and a few others. So it's, but the, uh, you know, folks downstairs. Yeah, just downstairs in our office building. So, um, but they are truly a, a sister company and, and my partner's a shared owner in that, in that entity. So, um, so it's been a nice value add for us uh, both ways. They're referring people into us. We're referring people out to them, handling the renter side of it. The, uh, the big thing is the master policies with the insurance. So that just makes it nice and easy for investors. Again, no matter where their stuff is to, to add or, or take away property as they need to from online portal system. So it works pretty well. Um, but just opening up and, and then we were, um, we, spoke on, uh, my partner and I spoke on a couple of podcast, uh, investment network podcast and got invited out to, uh, to the West coast to speak to some folks. And, uh, from there, uh, that opened the door to three or four buyer networks basically. And then there, uh, they were focused on Alabama already and, uh, and then Oklahoma city, but, uh, and then aligning ourselves with turnkey providers and, uh, partnering with some local contractors, to be able to facilitate that piece ourselves. So that's, that's been the growth cycle and back to that spread your entrepreneurial wings. I think that, you know, somebody that really gets stuck in a box and only wants to do property management per se uh, may handcuff themselves a little bit. So I think you, you can't be the master of all things. I understand that, but understanding what industry you're in and, and how you can be most effective and, and partner with people. Um, I mean, example, I had a phone call with a guy, a real estate agent here locally that I've known for 15 years. And all of a sudden, you know, April one, he just called me up uh, today just to say, Hey, April one, I, you know, I, I partnered with, uh, a rehabber and I partnered with a guy from a hit, uh, from a hedge fund. And, uh, we've got a couple funds going, I've got some inventory rehab and I hear you guys have some investor clients and, so, you know, those partnerships are all over the place. And, and at the end of the day, I think it all comes down to the relationship piece and uh, getting in front of people and, and just building those relationships. And maybe you don't do it in the one, you know, the one sit down at the bar and have an hour, but maybe it's the third one or the fourth one or, you know, just consistently uh, following up. I, I found that uh, a lot of these guys, if they're shopping you and shopping your competition, uh, what happens is they're not really ready to pull the trigger that day. But if you stick with the follow-up and just stay, uh, stay in front of them and stay consistent and know your metrics, then uh, a lot of these guys will circle back to you and they'll give you, they'll give you an opportunity. So that's, that's been our recipe for success for the last three years. All right. So you've, you threw out a lot of things really quickly. So I I'm going to recap <laughs> and I, I wrote some, I have notes here. Okay. So for those that are watching, like here's, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's cover some of these. So first, you said make sure you identify the good markets with best the best investments. Like get really familiar with your market, um, even nationally, taking a look at what which markets are hot and maybe to. I mean, most managers they're working in the market they're in, but the advantage of looking nationally would be to understand kind of maybe how their market fits in play with the national. Right. sort of scene. Okay. To see if their market maybe could be savvy to market, you know, um, investors outside of your geographic area. Does that sound that, about oh, it? Oh, that's, that's <clears throat> definitely. Exactly I think right. we, okay. we, we, we've recently had a lot of, um, out of state, out of market air, uh, investors coming in because of mm -hmm. they've heard nationally of Birmingham. And so they come in okay. and, and some of that information sometimes going to be a little bit old, but it's, it's taking them in and being willing to, and having the knowledge to, help them and help them understand the differences between Birmingham is big. So how do we, how do we separate that into areas of, let me explain this area and then this area and this mm -hmm. area, and then, then kind of compare it to yeah, whatever mac markets that yeah, they're macro used to. versus micro views. And I think that gives you common ground to speak to the investor. Yeah. If they're coming out of a Indianapolis market and then now all of a sudden they're looking at Alabama. Um, so it, it just so, gives you some common ground to start with. 
So, the, so that first one, ultimately what's really helpful is to have context to give them these out-of-state investors to see where your, how your market fits in with the national scene. So I right. think that is wise, like know your own markets, know the little neighborhoods in your market, but also see how you can fit into sort of the macro view of the nation and mm -hmm. beyond. So the second thing you mentioned is to shift away from accidental and land, accidental landlords. Right. Um, just recognizing that. I think the challenge, I talk about this concept called the four D's to revenue. And the first D is deals. The second D is the number of doors per deal. And a lot of times people just lump those together and they think a door is a door, but a door that's going to, and then the third D is duration. And that's how long you can keep them on. Right. And right. there's a massive difference between a one year buy and hold I mean, a one-year accidental and a 10-year buy and hold, right? Oh, 10 yeah, times yeah. difference yeah. in re revenue return. And then the last D is dollars, making sure you have good fees in place. And so a lot of people don't focus on each of these things individually. They're just like, I just need to get doors on. It's just about the doors. And there's a bit, there's such a big difference between those. So I think that's wise to, can, to shift away from accidental landlords. Um, the third thing you'd mentioned is identify partnership opportunities. So lots of different ideas here for um, partnerships. You had mentioned um, partnering with an insurance product or an insurance companies, um, bringing in a value add and partnering with them. Investment network podcasts, getting on investment network podcasts, um, then connecting to buyers networks um, and then turnkey providers for partnerships. And then you had mentioned follow up over and over and over That's again, right. right? That's right. That's right. And one other thing I'd add to that would be your preferred partnerships, um, preferred vendor partnerships. And, and okay. uh, one that we allude to all the time is we work with uh, Roofstock, which I don't know if, if you've had an opportunity to speak with those guys in the past. But um, yeah, so uh, great product, especially if you're buying anywhere coast to coast, but it's Roofstock.com. Shame, shameless plug there. But yeah. be sure to check that it's out. It's not for us. No, it's not for us. But what they do is they come online, they certify their property management partner. So once you have mm -hmm. those certified partnerships and the same thing with the wealth networks, once they've certified you as a vendor and a partner in that capacity, then you're then your trusted resource. So thereby it makes the closing of the transaction that much easier. One of the things that I, yeah. I really like about Roofstock is if you are able to direct your own internal investors, mm -hmm. if, if you don't have enough time to go through um, a, an actual buyer's agency with, with an investor that does want to potentially grow to more doors and you're busy being a property manager. You don't have time to walk down every That's single property with them. You can direct them to Roofstock and say, Hey, grab your properties from Roofstock, bring them to us. Like that, that, that helps take that portion off of it so that they're buying properties that you want to manage. They're right. buying properties that are already set up they're already, you know, already they're, they're already getting out. vetted out. They mm -hmm. they have an idea of what they're going to get. They're not coming to you with some uninformed number of I saw a house and I have no information about it. So maybe can we put a tenant in there? No, it's this house has a tenant in it. This is how much I'm paying for it. This is the ledger. This is what it's already making for rent. This is what it should make for rent. Whatever. Well, it allows and, you to control boom. that potential client, so you keep them inside your little you know, your little circle, if you will, so that, to ensure that they're going to be coming back to you. And they'll have such a, you know, just based on people we've referred to them over the last couple of years is the relationships are really tight. They take really good care of them and, and they do come back and they ask the property managers to perform to certain levels. And, and the, the properties are, as we mentioned, they're vetted out in advance. So a lot of the due diligence piece done, you know, we still always encourage our clients to do the their own due diligence, but uh, a lot of that's done on the front end for them. So it's a, it's a nice value add. So uh, that's a great tip. So property managers listening should go get connected if they can to roof stock so that they can have that vendor partnership. They can be listed as a preferred or recommended vendor. Are there other channels or how would somebody identify other channels that they should be looking at to become you know, a certified partnership or a, a preferred vendor as a property management company? You have anything Lo to add local to re, uh, REIs and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Any, okay. any sort of uh, investor networking, uh, most, most cities will have a local chapter and sometimes it's going to be wholesalers. That's mm -hmm. fine. You need wholesalers if you have, if you are trying to bring in homeowners that are going to be growing their business and growing their doors, which in turn is growing yours, you're going to have to have some product to give them. So it's not bad to have 
a few wholesalers that you know, right. and you know the product that they have, and you can steer it, and maybe you get an extra commission off of that. Who knows? But you're at least adding to your own business by adding to theirs. Yeah, and I, th I think my my biggest tip in this arena right here would be, I view everything as a funnel. So you've got to have multiple sources pouring into the funnel that's going to push out to you on the end. And I guess the tip to it all is develop the multiple networks and, and the multi you know, the multi approach to uh, just having a supply line for incoming clients. We all know about the renter side. That's pretty easy. Uh, but what I think has been underdeveloped over the years in the property management arena has been the, the client base side of it and trying to attract the clients back in instead of being strictly out of necessity, such as the case with an accidental landlord. Um, you know, there's there's so many factors to focus on, but but ultimately, I mean, we are big on having you know probably no less than ten different sources pouring into our funnel at any given point. So there's always a trickle effect, and then you're maintaining those relationships along the way. And in our operation, we have you know with five locations, I've got five different property manager brokers that are actually running the operations, and we we actually have an education piece each month. Uh, which we push out to all of our brokers and we have a mastermind call group each week or I'm sorry, each month that we work through problematic areas within the individual operations corporately and then on the local market level. And and all those things help us stay consistent in our, our team approach. And I think I saw uh, you had Jen Stoops on recently, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with Park Avenue. Love so Jen. yeah, we love Jen. Yeah. So so we did a we did a show with Jen and Deb uh, Deb Newell uh, after the five star event in Memphis, uh, mm -hmm. March, I think it was, but we were talking about Jen's approach with, uh, with John and park Avenue has always been that hub approach. So they have a, uh, you know, their back end office piece and then they're kind of spoked out as she, um, explained it to us. And that's, that's been fascinating to me because we have brick and mortar in each location. And a lot of right. that depends on what your state requires, but, um, but again, just a couple different strategies on how you do those operations and how you expand out and operate in multiple markets. But both of them work, and and both companies are, are are successful at it. So, so, but that's again, I just think don't put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, you know, my grandpa used to tell me that a long time ago, and and just growing up with entrepreneur par parents, I just saw that, um, you know, exampled out to me on a daily basis. But uh, but that's that's probably the biggest approach. Don't be fearful and, and don't put all your eggs in one basket, but just be mindful of the relationships. Yeah, I love this because I feel like the stuff that you're doing is foundational to growth. This is what property management, the industry needs right now. We've got 70% self-managing in single family residential. There's plenty of opportunity. Oh, yeah. There isn't scarcity in this industry yet, yet there's this false scarcity that's been perpetuated or created. And I think it's just so refreshing that you didn't mention yet, like it's all about SEO and it's all about doing pay-per-click ads and it's all about social media marketing. And it's all about content marketing. You're actually going out and tapping into that 70% and you're creating business. It's you're right. walking out the door, the business is there and you're getting the business while everybody else is fighting over the coldest, crappiest, worst leads that fall off your table. <laughs> on, well, on and I, I would also say everything you just addressed is important, too, and all that should be going yes. on in the background. But I mean, that, those horses have been beat to death over the last several years. So I think <laughs> yeah. it's and, and we get know. those, too. We get we yeah. get plenty of those and, and you have yeah. to call. You have to. That's right. You have to still call them because and follow up and follow up and follow up. You have well, but you know, yeah. the funniest thing, and I know, I know you could probably relate to this, but we see it all the time in any property management firm, uh, operator or property manager that's listening. Um, they have seen it on multiple occasions. So you'll get those, those tire kickers that come to you and, you know, they're, they're checking out your services and your rates and your reputation and all this stuff. And then they, it's like, okay, well, I'll call you when I'm ready. And, you know, you follow up with them and then eventually they come back you know, 12, 15 months later and say, okay, I'm ready to go. You remember my property? You remember, you know, we looked at thousands yeah, remember you of properties saw it. since then. You saw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You remember what remember. it looks like, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but we we do uh, we do make it a practice. Hey, hey, save that information. There's a good chance this comes back around. That's just experience of it all. But but those are typically, again, those are going to be your, um, your accidental landlords, your, your one-off homeowners that aren't really – um, you know, not being negative. They're just not investors. They're just investors by necessity only. Or they just want to know what their property potentially could list uh, for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they're they're going to put it on Craigslist. 
Yeah, that's why it's important to have a CRM and to keep track. I mean, I've talked, yeah. I talked to hundreds of property managers and it's so funny because I always hear, you remember, you remember me? And I, and sometimes I'm honest. I'm like, no, I don't, but I have really good notes here. So from when we talked <laughs> and, uh, and I can refer to that and that's enough, you know, that's enough. So it is. Yeah. And, a, and a thing, in a you know, as you're meeting, cause I, you know, we've seen you around at events and, and such, and, and everybody's intertwined in our industry over the, you know, at least through the, the NARPM scene and a couple other organizations we belong to. But uh, at the end of the day, it is about the, about the relationships. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I always said the the thing I love about NARPM and not to turn it into a NARPM commercial, but I always felt like the analogy that I would beat my head against the door jam every single day. And it was quite painful. And I got tired of learning from my own mistakes. And, you yeah. know, the opportunity came up to learn from other people's mistakes. So that made it much more, uh, much more appetizing, allowed me to enjoy it. Yeah, let other people bang their heads. That's right. And, uh, you can watch. <laughs> they already have. They've already yeah. banged their head on whatever problem you're about to have. They've already yeah. done it. Yes. Here's an answer for you already. Yeah. yeah. So, and we see that a lot inside of our Facebook community as well, the Door Girl Club. I mean, it's yeah. a resource. Everybody's super helpful. You can just ask a question and you get like, you know, at least, you know, several really solid answers. And, and you don't you don't have to be alone as an entrepreneur. I think as entrepreneurs, there's this kind of myth that's created in our own mind that we're we're alone. And it does feel like that a lot of times because our teams are a little bit different than us. There are people that want safety and certainty. We're the crazy right. freedom people. <laughs> and uh, and then, you know, most of the people I think in the world are not entrepreneur personality types. And so we feel like we're aliens sometimes on a foreign planet. But if you can get around other people through organizations like NARPM or through the Door Grow Club or, and connect with other people, you start to recognize that you're not, there's nothing wrong with you yeah. and, and you're not you're alone. normal and you're not alone. And there's plenty of people willing to help. And I think as entrepreneurs, we get, we are contribution focused people. We get momentum by helping other people. That's why we do what we do. And uh, and I think everyone's always so surprised if they've been disconnected from other people like them, other entrepreneurs, at how helpful entrepreneurs will be. Oh, they're so helpful, so giving. And I think really a rising tide raises all ships. This industry really needs more collaboration. We're not at the point where there's any sort of real scarcity or competition really is fierce. There's so much business available and... Um, and there's lots of room for growth, I think, and the industry is going to start to see that here in the next several years. So I think before I came to AHI, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, no, no, but, no, no. but it's it's one of the things that I learned on day one was before being at this company, it, I did have that mindset of like, I can't, I don't want to, I don't want to share any of this stuff. I, I got, I got to do all this by myself. And then one of the people, when, once I've been at AHI, one of our biggest competitors are are like we we refer to them all the time we refer people to them constantly because okay they might handle this better than we will in this instance yeah it's a it, our the competition is such friendly competition in this industry are you talking They're, about matthew i am talking about matthew so, it's yeah. it's so it's so collaborative and i mean we're having him at an event yeah in in a month yeah actually we're uh so i know Love you know it. matthew whitaker right matthew whitaker with gk GK I, houses. I, maybe they're probably, oh, they might be okay. in my well, you, CRM. He's got good hey, notes. You probably on have Brian. some good notes. <laughs> he's got good notes <laughs> on Brian. Uh, but anyways, Matthew, uh, and Matthew, Matthew's actually a, another, he's a contrast to my vision on and what we've done with growth. He's been growing through acquisition. Mm. And uh, so he, he was a uh, yeah, very different home, strategy. Yeah. Home investors, um, franchise holder and then converted internalized his PM operation after 0708 and then uh, you know went to work and basically he's grown from uh, gosh Birmingham to Nashville Chattanooga uh, Little Rock Arkansas and then Denver and Fort Collins Colorado so um, and he's done it through acquisitions and he's uh, he's a sharp mind he's uh, he's he's cutting edge guy but we you know, we we get along famously and have been friends for years, and we're we're actually hosting a PM summit uh, coming up in a month uh, in June. And uh, first thing that we put on in the state of Alabama, NARPM doesn't have a uh, a chapter in the entire state, so we're we're trying to do a kickoff event and get some uh, 
property managers in basically from the Huntsville, geographically from Huntsville all the way down to Montgomery and uh, just have a, a nice panel discussion. I've got some professional managers coming over from the Atlanta chapter, uh, Matthew, myself. So it'll be a great event and uh, we're looking forward to it. But I think it's going to lead to bigger and better things. And my, you know, my big piece, I think you touched upon it is, um, gosh, just make our industry better and set, raise the bar for crying out loud. And if nothing else, what that does for operators that are raising their bars, those that refuse to do it, there's such a, a, a difference between the two companies is easy oh, yeah. to select the one that's doing, doing it bigger and doing it better and, and more efficient and uh, giving more value back to our clients and customers. So that's, that's our focus. One of the things I that think. I see with the smaller realtors that are doing property management individuals, it's, we all have, we all know similar stuff. It'll, it'll, it'll be those stories where it's like, you know, Oh, I had this client that was doing this and like, I knew they shouldn't have done it. And, you know, we just let them and it was just an issue. Okay. Well, that's that education piece. Inform your client instead of just sitting there and holding it. Yeah. Like that's the thing that I see. So they're, they're afraid to lose that business. So they're afraid to step on those toes to educate their clients. Yeah. And empowering, you know, I, I, I make it a point to empower my team members. So it's, you know, when you empower a property manager and uh, always use the analogy of the guardrail system. So our procedures are guardrails and, and, uh, um, anyways, if they stay within the guardrails and they can have their own little flavor, but that empowers them to make certain decisions and, and do things that are, um, instantaneous and beneficial to everybody involved instead of having to go through red tape. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, all right. So let's, let's maybe wrap this up. If people want to maybe connect with you or find out a little bit more info, or they're curious about what you're doing for growth. Um, how can they get in touch with you and any final words to those that are struggling with growth right now? They're looking to grow their property management business. Um, my final thoughts would be just kind of going back and recapping this thing is just keep an open mind. Uh, don't be afraid, but focus on multiple, um, multiple funnels, if you will, you know, look at multiple opportunities for you to develop, uh, client relations, and, uh, and what we've found and nothing else. And I think our strategy ended up originating from the, the need for self-preservation. It's not that we were in danger. We just saw the market was going to change and had changed and will change again. So we want to be better prepared for that and allow ourselves better diversity in what we're doing. But uh, so if they want to reach us, um, again, we, we actually uh, do a podcast ourselves. So we have an email set up for that podcast at AHI Properties dot com and that ties directly to both of us and uh, we just love to uh, answer any questions and I'm, I'm always open and available by uh, by email and phone and I'll, I'll be happy to connect and, and uh, just give my two cents worth so but again I, I always like to get back to the industry it's been good to me and I, I like to get back awesome now, all right well I I'll just second everything Brian says. <laughs> He's got it. All right. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Brian, Jonathan, uh, grateful to have both of you here on the Dargo show. Appreciate what you guys are doing. And well, thanks for um, having I think us. this it was a pleasure. is a good message for everybody to uh, diversify your interests and in how you're, you're bringing in business. This is exactly what I coach clients to do. So I love that you're reinforcing <laughs> what I teach and um which is a welcome refreshing expectation unexpected you know you know thing so i um, appreciate appreciate you guys being here on the show yeah and, no, and uh, we, we you appreciate you having us best. and we we you know, thank you very much and uh and i just want to actually thank you for what you're doing for the industry because i, I think it's a wonderful yes. thing so it makes everything better that. yep Oh, thanks. Uh, everyone says that and i, I i'm going <laughs> to ask you what am i doing for the industry you know what? I, you know, here's, here's the deal. I, and I'm, I'm an old dog, but I, you can teach me new tricks. So I said that, you know, there's, there is a, uh, there's a generational change in the property management profession. And I mm -hmm. think as the level of professionalism comes up, we see a younger generation of property managers coming in behind. Uh, I think it's that, I don't want to say a transitioning of the guard, but it is a change of mindset from, from what was old. I mean, think about the technology piece and the systems pieces that have kicked in. I mean, oh, yeah, stuff that's happened lot. since 2012 is crazy. Um, I mean, we 
gosh, we were server based and yeah, just what Jason, <laughs> yes. or, actually what Jonathan was alluding to early on <laughs> with the, the ink on papers, you know, scenario. But, but I think that's the biggest piece is bringing awareness and just opening people's minds such as myself. I mean, I, uh, just that the, the new line of, of thought process and focusing on efficiencies and systems and, and the benefits of, of what's out there and available to us. I think that's a huge help to uh, entrepreneurs everywhere. And when you well, spread I'll, this I'll message, <laughs> when you spread this message out to everyone through the internet and, and it becomes national and worldwide that people can, can get this information, it keeps yeah. you from having to, you know, when you're going to partner with another, you know, property manager in a different area, you know, that we're at least, we can start from a, a place where we can both, you know, springboard off of instead of having to go and, you know, you're able to, we are able to send people to you and be like, just listen to this. That's that's the information you need, as opposed to us having to go. Yeah. We're going to have to teach you all this yeah. stuff when we first start. Well, that's start it. talking I mean, to you. it's it's fun to do it and educate, out. but it is an education piece for your inbound clients. So you're using all of that to to really set them up for success with your organization. And you know, the reason we got into uh, our podcast specifically was the first one that my partner and I were on. It was a guest on one of the investment wealth networks. And uh, gosh, we signed, we, we actually signed 52 houses off that one episode uh, nice. of clients coming in from out of state. So that, yeah, so that, that proved the value of it. And then the education piece. And really, if you're like me, if you travel and uh, gosh, I, I listen to podcasts all the time and come outside my own little world and, uh, you know, just really open that up. But people are listening to them on, on a more regular basis. And it's definitely an education piece and you can, you know, it's on demand for you. So that's, that's the beauty of it. Well, great. It's been great connecting with you guys. Love what you're doing. And Thank you. again, appreciate you being here on the door Grow show and I will let you guys go now. All right. Thank uh, you so much. Have a great working. day. Yeah. We'll <laughs> Thank you. All right. So uh, you heard it from those two gentlemen, you know, the strategies for growth really, uh, you need a diversified approach and there's so much available potential business out there. I really feel like the industry has so much potential for growth. I think it's a really exciting time for property management. There are tons and tons of people that are self-managing, they're frustrated, and they're not searching on Google um, according to Google Trends. So anyway, reach out to us at Door Grow. If you're struggling with any of these challenges, you want to you want to feel like, hey, I'm ready to be coached. I'm coachable. I'm open. I'm ready to grow my company. I'm ready to make some painful, difficult changes in my business. Then I might be able to help you. So uh, reach out to Door Grow. You can check us out at doorgrow.com and make sure you join our Facebook community if, so you don't end up getting stuck on random questions. You can ask questions in there, doorgrowclub.com. And uh, until next time, everybody, to our mutual growth. Bye, everyone.